Hello, my name is Eric Putkinen. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about that neither the experience of self nor no self is enlightenment. Now let's start with experiences in general. Experiences come and go. There are many experiences that, that arise. Some of them are deemed mystical or spiritual in that they seem to point to some greater truth. And among these mystical or spiritual experiences are also the experience of self and also the experience of no self. Now, as all experiences are, they are temporary. Experience comes and goes. And so trying to make an experience permanent is a fruitless endeavor. You can't make a experience permanent. If it goes away and you think, therefore, you've lost something, then you miss the point entirely. Um, it was just a passing experience. It gave you a glimpse of tr to the truth, but that wasn't enlightenment. Enlightenment is more about understanding, a revelation, a realization this transcends experience. It doesn't matter what the experience is. For the truth is known. <laughs> and um, but let's start with the experience of no self. Among the various mystical sp spiritual experiences, may it happen spontaneously uh, through meditation, <laughs> drug induced. Uh, it is possible to have this experience of the, the idea of me or the, the idea of self disintegrating, disappearing, being ripped away, and there being no me. And uh, there's many accounts of, uh, of this kind of experience, and usually people are blown away by this experience. Um, but the experience goes away, and the self is believed, continues to be believed, um, by m most or you know most of the people that have this experience, because they'll they'll come to people like me and say, "Well, I had this experience of no self. Uh, how do I get it back? How do I make it permanent?" <laughs> and uh, that's not the point. The point is not to make an experience permanent. The point is to deeply realize who and what you are for there to be self-knowledge as I think they translate the the word the, the phrases that I'm thinking of in, in Sanskrit but um, to know who and what you are is the point to get caught up in the phases is is beside the point that's why in Indian philosophy they they'll talk about who and what you are, you know, is in waking state, dreaming state, deep dreamless sleep the same, and then they talk about a fourth state that transcends them all. Well, there really isn't a fourth state. There's just the transcending all. <laughs> There's this, regardless of waking, dreaming, or deep dream, deep dreamless sleep, that who and what you are has always been and remains. So whether there's a sense of no self or whether the habitual mind throws up thoughts of a me, it comes down to whether this idea of a me is believed. <laughs> because if the me is believed, then the deep, profound understanding that, that shatters this illusion of me hasn't happened. There was just simply an experience of no me, and it went away. <laughs> but the shattering of the illusion of me, which, again, transcends the experience, so it doesn't matter whether thoughts of me come up or not, um, whether in using conventions of speech you say I, whether you, you you have to know what that I refers to. <laughs> so, it is 
it is different than the experience. I mean, the experience is great and all. Congratulations if you've had it, you know, because it's kind of interesting and can be can be profound. But don't confuse it for enlightenment. Um, enlightenment is not about having a permanent experience of no self. Likewise, when they talk about the self, which is not contradictory because the self is not really personal. It's not something you can identify with. Um, so no me and the self are not in contradiction. They, they actually are um, you know, two sides of the same coin, so to speak. It's just, it's just a phraseology. It's a, the direction being pointed. But it is um, when there's an experience of a profound experience of self, this indivisible non-separateness, um, this you know profound sense of being, existence that doesn't seem to be missing anywhere. Um, this kind of experience can also come and go. <laughs> it's actually kind of related to the, the experience of being one with everything, which is actually even more common, where you may feel you're at one with your surroundings. But um, there's, there's also this possibility of an experience that some would say, well, I had an experience of the self. I know the self. Well, Again, as so often is the case, that experience goes away. Because that's what experiences do. They go away. <laughs> and again, people like that often come to people like me and say, well, how do I make this experience permanent? How do I get it back? Again, that's beside the point. If you truly had a realization, a revelation the 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 profound understanding of self that would be deemed as enlightenment it wouldn't matter whether the experience of self was present or not it doesn't matter if there's this feeling of separation or not or this feeling of oneness or not because even if there was a, say, as often as, as I've been asked a few times, um, people have this experience and then they'll talk about having a feeling of contraction. As if they become less so. And I'll point out, it doesn't matter if there's a feeling of, of contraction or expansion. Both of them, oh, contraction and expansion, Neither are the self. <laughs> and so what's happening is the, the experience of self passes, a contraction happens, and you're identifying with something that contracts. Which means you're still identifying with something other than the self. And as long as you're identifying with something other than the self, enlightenment hasn't happened. It's not possible to be really fooled by the illusion if you've really seen through the illusion. <laughs> I mean, um, it is, it, it's about understanding. Profound, deep revelation, realization that transcends experience. And so it's not about experience. And so many people get hooked up, or hung up, or fixated on the experience, which is far easier to, for to happen. I mean, I mean, uh, the experience of self, the experience of no self, is far more common than enlightenment is. But, and it, and it's not a even a sign of progress towards enlightenment. The experience can really happen to anybody. 
spiritual or not, meditator or not, you know, um, it doesn't, you know, it's not a requirement. And so whether this experience happens or not doesn't really particularly matter. Matter of fact, it can often creates more obstacles because if you become fixated on this experience of self, this experience of no self, and start up the, you know, impossible task of how do I make this experience permanent? You've now put up a barrier, another obstacle, because it's impossible to make an experience permanent. Besides, Permanent, constant experiences aren't felt. They fade and disappear on their own. Take the atmospheric pressure. We're all under 10, 15 pounds of pressure from all sides. We're being compressed from all directions at all times. Do you feel it? No one really feels it. Why? Because you've always been under that pressure. It's a constant experience. <laughs> and do the workings of how the brain works, any constant experience is ruled out. Any constant experience fades into the background, so to speak. It's kind of like if there is... Well, take if you're trying to fall asleep. If there's going to be noise, which would you prefer? One that's sharp and happens every once in a while? Or a constant drone? Everyone would, would choose the constant drone because it's easier to filter out. Because <laughs> that's what the brain is able to do. Anything that's constant, it's able to go disregard. Really, what we experience, what we really notice, is that which changes. And if it did not change, it would not seem very profound. It would just fade into the background. And so even if by some miracle, someone managed to make the experience of self permanent, they would find that over time, the experience would fade and feel less so all the time. And if you interpreted that as somehow I'm losing it, and therefore I need to redouble my efforts to get it back. You're really missing what's going on. You can never become more or less than what you really are. And so whether it's self or no self, it never goes away. Just the experience of it may come and go. <laughs> And so as these experiences can come and go, and even if it was constant, it would slowly fade on its own. Kind of like kind of like a car. You could be driving 60 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour. It doesn't matter the speed. You could be booking. But if it's constant, it wouldn't really even feel like you're moving that fast, especially if you couldn't see the outside. If you were in a, a, a train car with no windows and you were booking at, you know, Mach 2, and if it was constant, but, you know, and stable, it wouldn't feel like you're moving. <laughs> now, if you suddenly turned, and so there's this change, and so there's, a, there's inertia and momentum and all these other things going on, you would feel it. Or if you suddenly sped up and the G's increased, you would feel that. If you suddenly slowed down and the, and the G's decreased, you'd notice that. But if you're constant, the feeling of moving just kind of fades away. <laughs> so yeah, I wouldn't get fixated on the experience of it. Because even if you manage to grasp a permanent experience of it, it would still go away. It wouldn't feel as, as, as the weeks and months and years passed, 
it would feel less and less significant. <laughs> because it's always there. But that's not the point. The point is the understanding. It is the, the shattering of the illusion. Not. The experiences are reflections of what's really there. Because really, the eye cannot see itself. It's, 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 a, it's impossible for the eye to literally see itself. It's kind of like trying to see the back of your own head. You can't really see it. And some clever, bright people say, well, get a mirror. Then you see it. But they fail to understand you're still not seeing the eye. You're seeing a reflection of what you assume to be the eye. <laughs> you're still not seeing it directly. You're seeing a reflection. You're seeing a mirror with a reflection of the eye. You're not seeing the eye. You're seeing a mirror with a reflection of an eye. And so you can never see the eye directly. And that's what the experience of self, even no self, are. the reflections. For ultimately, really, the truth, which I've kind of alluded to earlier, is that it's neither self nor no self, nor both, nor neither. What you really are transcends it all. And so, I hope this doesn't muddle things up <laughs> and actually, uh, you know, makes some things clearer. But uh, if you have any questions, please post below. Um, please, you know, Pass my videos on if you think somebody might like them. Um, but until next time, thank you much.